Okay, so here we have uh, RXTZZ. And we've got a 3v3 replay analysis. Same game as Nordic Legacy. Let's go. So interesting camera settings. Um, so right off the bat here, um, you see your, your teammates going for boost in the right corner. Um, so in this uh, type of kickoff situation, um, what I would probably do is just do like a circle. So your teammate. One of your teammates is going for the right corner boost, the other one is going for the ball. So what you can do is, assuming that your teammate hits the ball on the kickoff and doesn't go straight into your net, uh, you can take a left uh, circle turn here. So if you see that uh, small boost pad to your left, you can grab that one. And then there's actually another one off screen to the left that you can grab. So you can pick up at least 24 boosts that way, and then there should also be a third one that you can pick up. Um, so if you just do sort of a small circle rotation back to the net, uh, that allows you to be in position to, to save anything that happens to come your way, or you can be in position to back up your teammate who's going to that corner boost. Um, so uh, that's one possible uh, thing you could do on this kickoff what you shouldn't do is just kind of sit and do like what you did there um, that kind of like forward backward motion doesn't really accomplish that much and I said the same thing on the Nordics um, replay you wanna try and have momentum whenever possible in your game and when you're going forward and backward a lot that kind of kills all of your momentum so uh, just keep that in mind but it's okay. So you see the ball, you boost towards the ball. Um, in this situation, you want to be thinking about where your teammate is. So if you remember, your teammate is still um, on this back right corner. So he's also going for this ball, um, which is going to lead to you guys double committing uh, on this attack. So generally, you want to let your teammate in the corner here get the ball because they're going to have more boost um, and if you had done that circle rotation like I was saying like you pick up these three boosts here and then you would be somewhere right here um, by the net uh, just in case your teammate loses that uh, challenge so with that in mind um, let's go back here and see where this ball goes so it does go towards the net. So if you hadn't gone for that ball, you'd be in a position right now to actually uh, clear this ball and set up a counterattack. But because uh, you double committed on this ball, that leaves you in an awkward spot. Okay. So this is questionable, so I like that you went up and made this play on the wall here. Um, kind of a weird landing. It, it would be better if you landed like facing down, but it's not much you can do about that. Um, so we get off the wall, and right here is where you made a mistake. So instead of turning back towards this ball, once you've made your play here, there's nothing else you can do because if you take a look at where your teammates are like you already have a teammate who's coming up and ready to make a play on this ball like you've just made your play so you should be getting off the wall here and rotating out this way getting behind your teammates where's your other teammate oh he's over here okay yeah so you should be rotating in behind this guy um, so let Kadabra make his touch and kind of get out of the way. Um, there's not much you can really accomplish by circling back on this ball other than getting in the way of your teammate. 
and still you should be rotating back no no point in trying to go for that ball like if you look at the angle you're at any touch you make is just going to be the same as what your the enemy car is trying to do so you should back off rotate around your team so now you're in an awkward position and if that had been on target that would have been a very difficult save um, whereas if you had rotated far post um, kind of where Tyler is headed um, you would have been able to get an easy clear out of that um, so this little turn is kind of confusing your teammate um, probably what you should do is recognize that your teammate is also back um, but you're in front of him so it's your job to be second man here and support uh, Kadabra be able to follow up whatever touch he gets but instead you decide to rotate back in the net and that is gonna confuse your teammate who is already in net so in that situation you should be ready to hit that ball rather than rotating back into net that's okay um, so here um, it's fine for you to go for this ball um, your teammate should see you and then back off which he does um, but unfortunately you have no boost um, if you have been able to catch up to that ball and just get a, even just a simple tap out, that would have been good. That actually was uh, pretty good there. So that was a good little uh, sequence of events. May have been partially luck, but it worked out that we did get a touch around two of their players. Which bought us quite a bit of time. Not bad rotation here. Uh, I think he went out just a little bit too far. So when you're rotating back, you can just kind of chill like in this general area. Like you don't have to go all the way into the net. Like you can still save pretty much anything that happens to come out. And by being a little bit further away, um, that gives you more options if the ball does come towards the net. So like here would have been fine. Just kind of hang out over here. But now that you're in the middle of the net, it's a little bit awkward if it does happen to get cleared to like the backboard or something like that. Which it kind of does. So if you are out more on the side, you would have been able to turn in better than having this kind of like awkward turn here. Uh, regardless, uh, pretty good save. So a little awkwardness from your team, so it's good that you're kind of being cautious here and see how this plays out. There's not a lot you can do when they're both on the ball like that. You just kind of have to let them commit and try to be the, the iron wall here in case the ball gets cleared. So this is a little questionable here, backing up. Um, both of your teammates are rotating back. I would like to see you maybe, instead of backing up, just kind of be, take like more of a shadowing position and be like facing towards the back corner or something. Or just facing away from the ball. That way you can take possession easier rather than backing up. You lose a lot of momentum here by doing that forward-backward motion again. So again, momentum is important. You don't want to be sitting still, going forward to reverse all the time because you won't have any speed to be able to hit the ball. Okay, so now we can finally go. We don't get a good touch here. Um, if you have been facing back towards the corner already, you probably would have easier time getting this touch. Um, but that's just the mechanics thing, being able to get like a pinch up the wall, and that'll come with time. So, yeah, this is okay. So, yeah, 
and that's another mechanical thing so you need to be able to um, get a solid hit off of that bounce and like read that qu bounce quicker but that's okay you do kind of juke out your teammate though because you didn't get a, a touch earlier a little bit awkward so just need to have a little faster like reaction being able to read these plays so after you make that touch you want to look so you see this guy boosting towards the ball I maybe you're trying to block his shot I'm not sure but it's quite delayed so obviously bumping your teammate is not good but we do a nice little flip out of there So again, right idea, just kind of poor execution on that hit. You got to be able to get a powerful hit on the ball here. And that just comes with more practice. Um, one thing you probably want to do is uh, work on some training packs um, like Rocket League Trainer and just practice getting powerful hits on the ball uh, like power shots, power clears. Um, there's training packs for all that stuff would probably help you in that situation. So again, right idea, just poor execution on the actual hit. Um, it's a good idea to go for this ball. Ideally you can clear it to the left side somewhere and your teammate can get it or you can maybe even get a shot. But just not quite there. Let me see how you did the aerial for this. So you did a single jump aerial. You might want to look at double jump aerials, fast aerials. Um, this is another type of aerial that you can do where you can actually get to the ball faster and use less boost. So yeah, just go on YouTube, look up double jump aerial or fast aerial and try implementing that into your gameplay it would probably help a lot. So now we've no boost, going back, get the side boost. We get bumped. That's fine. We're doing a lot of turns. It's very interesting. This is like next level recovery except we land upside down so try landing right side up next time oh no yeah we so this could have been a goal for Nordic Legacy but we decided to hit the ball away from him so if we had left that ball or even just tapped it a little bit lighter he would have been able to follow that up into a goal so you just need to recognize what's going on here so he still has control of this ball it, I know it's tempting the balls right in front of you you want to hit it but it's probably not the best idea in this situation you probably just want to rotate out to the right and make it easier for your teammate to get the goal but instead that happens Um, okay. Yeah, I don't really like this. Um, your teammate is already in position for this ball, as you can see. Um, so, you should know that he's already there. If you don't, take another look here. So, there's Nordic. Now you see Kadabra on the right side. So, he circles around. But you can guess he's probably still in that general area. So, like, I'd expect him to be right off screen there. And if that's where your teammate is, he's in a better position to challenge that ball. So that's probably what he's doing. So, at this point, you're just double committing on the ball. And if you're not sure, you can always press Y uh, and uh, get into car cam and take a look at where 
your teammate is whether or not you should really be challenging this ball. So let's double commit. And we're on our way back. This play is not good. Um, you definitely don't want to be getting the corner boost on the opposite side of the field while the enemy team is on a counter attack. Um, you could very easily have just driven like straight back and grabbed that side boost over there or even taken an arc around the field to pick up all these small pads. So if you don't know what I'm talking about with the small pads, it's basically... So these little guys are 12 boost. And you can see that there's kind of like an arc going around the side of the field. Around the middle of the field with all these small boost pads. So instead of taking this corner boost, um, which is f taking you further away from the play, you can pick up these small boost pads. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 rotate around this guy seven maybe so there's at least like six or seven of these on your way back and that's basically a hundred boost right there so you don't even need to get this boost um, let alone the side boost even you could just take this arc all the way back and you would be fine so you can keep that in mind so we get this boost our teammate makes a save and at this point it's pretty obvious that Nordic has control of the ball and he's going to start taking it towards the enemy half and in that scenario we want to be uh, kind of in an offensive position so we don't want to just rotate in the net we want to kind of be close by in like a second man position to help uh, back up our teammate on his attack but Kadabra kind of shows up out of nowhere he should probably be the one in that position but he's a little bit behind so we have to let him go and sit awkwardly here so that's fine now it's our job to hit this ball so <coughs> if you're a little more comfortable with your aerials you could go for that ball uh, let's see so right there you can go for that ball maybe even get a shot on net um, so that's just more aerial practice that you can do so that you can react quicker to those and get up f get up for those balls like even if you miss it's not a big deal because Kadabra is right there so I would encourage you to go for those types of shots uh, in the, in games, in casual games, um, or do more practice and training packs. Because there's really no reason for us to wait for this to hit the sidewall. That just gives us a really terrible hit and almost results in the enemy team getting it. So that guy ends up getting it. And what you can do after you land here is try to get this side boost maybe. But for some reason you end up further upfield when you should be trying to get back. So that's just probably just a recovery issue. Just practicing recoveries. Like in free play you could just go and hit the ball at the wall. Or in like practice like landing on the wall and then getting off of the wall. And that will help you get better at these types of recoveries. So that's fine we're headed back. Again, you could just go for these um, small boost pads. You don't have to go for the corner boost. Like you were like right over here, you could just take these like four small pads here and that would be plenty of boost for you. Um, so we get this boost. Um, good idea. I like what you're thinking on this hit. It's just again, poor execution. So we go up the back wall, and then what you needed to do here was actually just take, oh, whoops, you just needed to go up a little bit more, angle your car up on the wall, 
So I'm watching. Okay, so. So you're going up for this ball. Now you see how you angle your car down before you jumped off the wall? If you look at this again. So you're going, and this is a decent angle. You could probably jump off at this angle. But then you turn to the right as you jump off, and that causes your car to go down instead of up. So if you had kept your car at like a 45 degree angle and then jumped off, you would have been able to hit this ball for sure. But because you turned your car to the right, uh, you're not able to hit this ball. And that results in a goal. So yeah, just uh, being able to execute those uh, backboard clears is uh, important. So we're on the kickoff. I prefer, I mean, this kickoff is fine, but um, you might want to experiment a little bit with um, adding some flips. So what you can do is boost and uh, accelerate here and then do a forward flip, a forward dodge towards the ball, and then that lets you conserve a little bit of boost, and then you can flip again into the ball over here. That was actually went in our favor, so it was fine, but the only problem with that is now you have zero boost. So there's no way you can really make a play on this ball. You have to go back. Which is typically what happens anyway, but sometimes the way the kickoff goes, it's nice to have a little bit of boost to make a play. Uh, so just something to consider. So both of our teammates are upfield. We gotta make the save, which we do. Not the greatest touch. So that was actually a decent aerial. Um, it would have been nice to get a little more power out of it. Um, again, if you had done a double jump aerial here, you would have had a much easier time. So instead of jump, tilt, boost, do jump, jump, tilt, boost. And there's different variations on that. Um, if you look up fast aerial, that's actually the best way to do it. You do like accelerate, boost, jump, tilt, and then jump again. Um, but there's tutorials on how to do that if you want to know more. So, but we do get the touch. Um, unfortunately, it goes straight to that guy. We get the save. So here, I'd like to see you just collect boost better all these small pads so you got a couple so good job there but then you immediately start using it again so you could have gotten a little bit more boost like take this uh, small ring here you could just go in like a semicircle and take like all of these or you could even go to this corner boost if you want so that's like five five of these pads plus that one so could get a little bit more boost. Um, so back to this. The ball's coming out. You, know, you could still even just get the corner boost. Like going up now with 18 boost is not great. Like you can get a couple small pads, but you're going to be, as last man back, you generally want to have a full boost uh, amount. And the ball's not really going anywhere yet, so you, I think you had time to get that corner boost if you wanted it. That's still in there, on their corner. And now we get the side boost, or I thought, is that a glitch? No side boost. So now we went all the way back and got the corner boost, finally, about like 20 seconds later. So you could have just gone in it here, but instead we waited, we tried to make a play. We used a bunch of boost, and then we just ended up going back. So definitely, uh, definitely consider that uh, could have gotten that boost earlier. And now we're still just backing up for some reason. So when did our teammate come back? So our teammate's already back. So you saw our teammate came back, so once you have that boost, you should go. And once you know your teammate is back, you should go and challenge that ball. But since you waited, um, 
Our teammate ends up cutting us off. And we don't get a touch here either, so. There's about like 20 to 30 seconds of just kind of not having any boost and not knowing what to do. Um, so you want to think about where your teammates are, where, you know, what position you're in in the the pecking order, so to speak, and, and uh, when you need to challenge that ball. So we got bumped all the way to the side. Again, we don't really have any boost. We should probably pick up that side boost before trying to get in this play. So we weren't able to make that touch. But if we had the side boost, we could go on the wall and get a clear here. Yeah, this rotation is, is actually fine. I was going to say maybe go far post here, but you're not really in the way of your teammate, so I don't mind it. That power slide is not good. When you're on the wall here, there's no need to power slide there. You can just turn and drive off the wall. Power sliding is not typically... I mean, it is good, but it's not really that useful in lower ranks. Uh, especially when you're not utilizing it correctly and the way it's done here is you're just losing momentum and power slide is good when you want to make a fast uh, turnaround um, and and doing a pe effective power slide has to do with uh, how long you hold the power slide button and there's tutorials on that I think musty has a tutorial, but it's, it's not really that important for now. But I'll say you didn't really need to use it here. Okay, so again, we should be either challenging that ball or not challenging that ball. And right now we're doing both. So the ball is going, and then so here you are sitting, which was fine, and then you decide to go for the ball. But then you decide not to go for the ball. So you gotta pick one. So you can't do both at the same time. You have to either challenge the ball or not challenge the ball. And here, since you already started going, I will just go ahead and challenge the ball. Even if you're not sure you can read that touch, uh, you, you could just go up the back wall and hit that. Um, not being aware of where your teammate is, he was ready to make a play because you backed off. If you had just tried to hit that ball from the wall, he would not have cut you off, but since you waited, he decided to aerial for this. Putting us in a bad position. Again, just being too hesitant. You gotta challenge this ball so your teammate is in the same spot. So, uh, one of you has to go. And it's better that one of you starts going, or both of you start going, and then whoever's the furthest back stays behind, than both of you staying behind and nobody getting the ball. Uh, no need to really back up this far on the back of the net. So you decided not to go, so you should just kind of stay back post. So, instead of like here, you want to be kind of in like this position here, um, or like out here, or even like in the corner, like over here, somewhere in this general area, ready to take any ball that happens to come this way. Um, okay, so... That happens. I don't know why your teammate didn't end up getting a touch here. I think he was just confused and then didn't have any boosts. And then he thought you were closer. So if you had seen him getting the boost, you might have been able to take a position near post and then hit this ball. 
but because you're a little bit farther away you can't really do anything and that ends up being a goal yeah so th the first mistake was just not challenging the ball ever so a lot of a lot of parts where you could have gone for the ball or you were going for the ball and then you backed off like it's okay if you miss you just have to make a decision to go for it that's all that happened there really yes yeah. so after this goal so 2-0 Another thing you might consider learning how to do is a uh, half half flip. Um, it's where you basically do a back flip and then you air roll your car so that you're facing the other direction. It's one of the fastest ways to turn around. Um, and that will just make it so you're facing this back corner instead of away from the corner. Um, doesn't really matter in this situation but it's a very useful mechanic to learn and will definitely help you um, get into the higher ranks by learning it it's the half flip okay so you should challenge this ball here there is no one else around everybody is basically this guy's going back and everyone else is like all the way on this side of the field so you have no reason not to try and get this ball and your teammates coming in behind you he can back you up if you miss or something so definitely uh, take this chance to take control of this ball but instead you wait and then someone will probably Okay, so we just kind of missed. Yeah, so that's just the mechanics thing, being able to read that uh, coming off the wall. Again, I think if you did some more training packs, maybe some stuff that had some wall, wall balls, um, probably help. Okay, so that was a fine play. Get the corner boost. Again, with the power slide, it's completely unnecessary here. You just end up wasting your momentum. So if you just did a turn, a regular turn here, you would get back much faster than if you did the power slide. Now, if you had used power slide correctly, it might have been faster. But there's really no need in this situation use power slide um let's see I think our teammate just cut us off yeah he probably should have rotated in behind you but he doesn't so we just kinda let him go that's fine again double jump aerial would be super useful here but we get a decent touch and we get the possession but we throw away the ball so in this sequence of events Cuban is last man back he's probably not gonna be going for this ball right away so he's kind of staying back so after this guy misses we can just take control of this ball get a soft touch either a soft touch or a shot on net I would say but we kind of do neither we kind of do like a medium hit and then that lets him get the ball so if you had done like a soft pop you might have been able to get a second hit on the ball or you could have just taken a hard shot on net by like flipping into the ball but when the ball is rolling towards you like here the ball's rolling towards you it would probably be best to just get a small hit on the ball and if you look up bounce dribbling that's essentially what I'm talking about here you want to try and bounce dribble the ball um, 
take control and get it past the last defender. But instead we pass it to him and we get blown up. Uh, yeah, it's unfortunate we spawned over there, but it's fine. Again, with the power slide, really not necessary in this scenario. And again, if we had a double jump here, instead of a single jump, we could have hit this ball. Like right here, just double jump. And you would have had enough height to hit this ball. Okay. Uh, so f again, forward, backward, not good. Uh, just do a, a turn instead of going back and forth like that. And now we're making an awkward attempt at a hit to confuse our teammate. And we're not going to get that boost. Um, okay. So, yeah, so we're definitely not hitting that ball. We have no boost. We should just take a circle. Our teammate's probably behind us. Yeah, so our teammate's right there. We have no boost. We should probably just let this guy come in, take our spot, and then we can either rotate back around this guy, pick up some small pads, get a little bit of boost, or we can go towards the corner and try and make a play. Either one. But again, just being kind of indecisive about what you want to do and not recognizing that this hit is coming. And that's it. Alright, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, it's definitely interesting seeing the same game from another player's perspective. Um, I would say you can definitely work a little bit more on the mechanics side. Um, doing some more training packs uh, on like uh, power shots, uh, power clears, and learning some of the more advanced mechanics like double jump aerial, fast aerial, um, half flip. Um, that would help you advance quite a bit as a player. Um, what else? Uh, if you look up Rocket League Trainer, um, it's a free uh, Windows application that you can download that has a ton of training packs separate from the in-game training packs. And you can select what types of shots to take and what difficulty those shots are. And it, it was really helpful for me starting out. And I, th I think that's kind of the point that you're at where you would benefit the most from focusing on mechanical um, improvements. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, if you're confused by anything I said, and like what's near post, what's far post, um, if you have questions like that, I'd be happy to, to clarify a little bit more. You can just uh, shoot me a message. All right. Thanks.